Hello everyone and welcome to PPMC Magazine Screen Talk with me, Wayne Stafford. We are coming to you from the stylish five-star luxurious Morel's Boutique Hotel here in Northcliffe, Johannesburg. Now this is an episode dedicated to all married women. If you thought that your pageant days are over, they're not. The Mrs. South Africa pageant have extended and increased their age limit to 55 years old, making it more inclusive. So we're going to be highlighting a very special woman in this episode. She's the newly crowned Mrs. South Africa 2022, a lady that wears many hats over and above being a mother, a businesswoman, a wife, and, well, you'll have to, you'll have to not go away and stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Queen Talk with me, Wayne Stafford. So as promised in the house and in this episode, we have the reigning, the newly crowned Mrs. South Africa 2022, the gorgeous Palessa Machikani. Welcome, Palessa. Oh, Mr. Wayne, thank you so much for having me today. I'm truly honored. No, it's really great <laughs> having you. <laughs> now, Palessa, <laughs> right, I know, you know, normally it's very excitement. No. Still in the air. Goosebumps. Yes. Goosebumps. Still get goosebumps. Round not so long ago. How does it feel to know that you are now Mrs. South Africa? It's so surreal. I mean, I've been saying these words to myself for a year. I look at myself in the mirror, I'm like, you are the next Mrs. South Africa 2023. Now, for that to truly manifest into 2023 and finally getting the crown has been a dream come true. But now, speaking about manifestation and dream come true, I mean, the viewers out there need to know that this is not something that just happens overnight. I know that you've entered three times, right? And there's a saying that goes through third time lucky, which in your case it was. But I went about just being luck. You know, I believe it's all about timing. And if it's your time, it's your time. But just share with the viewers about your journey to the crown. Okay, so um, as mentioned, uh, it's my third time entering. Um, I entered in 2011 and I fell pregnant with my daughter. <laughs> I literally found out the day after we announced this top 100. And then I entered again in 2020 during COVID. I didn't make it. I think I made as far as the semis, not necessarily the finals. And I was distraught. My mm. family was destroyed. My children were destroyed because, you know, they felt that the journey was still mm. going to continue and we're mm. still going to see mom thrive. Mm. And they loved the person I was becoming. Mm. So for them, it was still, you know, the journey was still mm. going to continue. But um, I think growing up, I've always learned the power of courage to never give up. Never give mm. up on your dreams, no matter what. I mean, mm. life will always throw things at you. Mm. Uh, but, the, you know, the aim is to get up. Once you don't succeed, you keep going. And I want my children to learn that. Mm. And I want the youth that empower to know that. But you know what? Sometimes you don't get what you want the first time around, but you keep going after it until you attain it. You know, your success story reminds me a lot of that Miss USA, that one military lady. I can't remember her name, but she entered none, nothing less than yeah. seven, seven times. times. Seven times. You know, going into the state pageant and losing. Say again, and, losing, and eventually won. But what words of advice would you give to someone? You know, the pageant world nowadays, it's... it's major big industry yeah. and uh, there, there are many opportunities for guys and girls to enter pageants but it's not a matter of entering and just think you're going to win it how do you overcome or how do you deal with rather disappointment Whew. i think allow yourself to go through the process mm -hmm. i think often than not we kind of go into that you know dark cloud without thinking there'll ever be a silver lining but to allow yourself embrace it i embrace not making through and i said god but there has to be more there has to be more because I've been through this journey. Yes, I didn't get to where I wanted to go, but what it was in store for me, what's my journey, what's my purpose for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. So truly not to dwell in the negative, not to dwell in the failure, mm -hmm. but see it as a stepping stone towards even more bigger things because it teaches you a lot, a lot of resilience mm -hmm. more than anything. So for me, I would say that resilience, 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 mm -hmm. re resilience. Mm -hmm. But Palissa, tell me, you know, things have evolved to such a point where one doesn't need to walk this journey alone. And when I say that, is that there's a rise of a lot of credible, if I can call it that, skilled pageant mentors. What is your viewpoint on that? Um, I'm a firm believer that you cannot make it on your own. Um, I, I myself, even through this journey, I have a tribe of women and men that are really pushing me mm. 
you know, just people to account to, people to tell you the truth, mm. especially once you think you have it all figured out. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always have to have those people that sink you back mm. and say, listen, don't forget the end goal here. This mm. is how you go about it. So for me, I'm a firm believer of mentorship. I've got a spiritual mentor, you know, mm. I've got, you know, uh, an overall um, well-being uh, mentorship. So I'm a firm believer of mentorship. I believe mm. that you need, you need someone to account to, someone to, to tap back to as well because the journey is not easy mm. it's not easy and you don't want to go through it feeling lonely mm. because you can get to that space where mm. you feel like you don't have it all figured out mm. maybe you're not worthy i had those fears for myself as well where i felt like okay no what on earth am i thinking third time <laughs> third <laughs> yeah. time truly doing this mm. what on earth mm. but you know just to have people to say but don't forget why you started mm. You know, so definitely. The journey goes by very quickly. I know they say it's like one year, but those 12 months fly. What would you like to achieve uh, or leave a legacy, your stamp as Palesa Machikani, Mrs. South Africa 2022? So I go by the saying, dream it, believe it, and be it. Mm. You know, it's dream it, but also you have to believe it and you also have to attain it. Mm. And um, I think entering Mrs. SA already, I was, I was making my mark in the empowerment industry in terms of empowering women and educating youth. Mm. Um, youth specifically because I feel like they are, once you've laid down the foundation for them, a lot of them don't have mentorships. Mm. Some parents have fallen short, some have lost parents, some, you know, they just, certain parents mm. don't know how to help them achieve their goals and to actually push them to be the best versions of themselves. Mm. So for me, I want to leave that legacy. I want to educate and empower. Mm. Speaking of parenting, you're a mother, yes. you're a wife, you're a businesswoman. How do you, as Mrs. South Africa, juggle all these roles? It has to be your mental health. Mm. There's power in mental health. And I know the word has been said so much, but the, truly there's power in mental health. I think for me, um, those I wear a lot of hats, as mentioned. And... I wouldn't make it without having that one-on-one -on -one session with myself and, you know, mm. center myself back to who Baleza mm. truly is. Mm. I believe a mother and being a wife is, you know, chapters in your book, but you mm. should always center yourself into who mm. is Baleza mm. and what is Baleza like? Do mm. those things that you, you know, mm. that you have laid to rest because you're a mother and you're taking so many hats, but you need mm. to center off mm. into that as well. So you can't, they can't feed off an empty cup. So you need to fill in your cup. So... We're speaking of many hats, I mean, she's got a few more now to add. And one that I would like to bring light to is that not only is she a mother, wife, Mrs. South Africa, uh, but she's also a fashion designer. You've got a fashion line. I've got a fashion line. So a woman of many talents, but yes. called Maison Lisa, which Maison she launched. Lisa. Yes. yes. La well, excuse me, I didn't get the pronunciation <laughs> right. But um, yeah, so you launched this brand, this, this fashion line last year. What is your vision for this year? Are you going to be able to make time for it? Yes. I mean, part of the reasons I entered the platform was for my brand. And mm. that's, that's the beauty of this pageant. You know, mm. you get to bring in a rope in as many umbrellas that you, you know, that you have acquired throughout your life, but um, that you don't change who you are. So I think Maison Lisa were firstly was stemmed from not making it in 2020. That was my silver lining of not making it. And I was intentional about that. I wanted to know why God, why, why did I not attain it? You know what I mean? So Maison Lisa streamed from that. Um, it's a passion of mine. It was reignited purely through that journey. And it was named after my grandmother. Oh, wow. Yes, it's after my mother and my grandmother. They're both Elizabeth. So the Lisa aspect of it yes. comes from them. And um, I wouldn't be where I am without those two women. Mm. And I believe that it's going to resonate through the brand. And that's why this year, it's... It's going to be exciting. I mean, I look forward to mm. to launching uh, mm. my new my new uh, mm. what's this my latest range. Yes. And have I'm having a mm. show. I'm going all out. I'm no, well, we can't to wait to see. And I, yeah, I hope you don't mind me saying, yes. but you're wearing one of your creations yes, right am. now. I mean, just look how incredible! <laughs> how incredible I she am. looks. Palissa, just you. quickly, obviously, you know, being Mrs. South Africa, national title holder, what comes with the journey, a part of the platform, is representing your country towards the end of the year on an international platform for yes. Mrs. World. Now, I know you're no stranger to international pageants because pageants have been in your blood for a while. How are you working? How's the preparations? I know it's early days, yes. but they always say, rather start early than too late. Yes. What, what, what's the preparation going like towards that? 
Okay, so first and foremost, um, like I always say, I always, I know, I run with a tribe. <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to base my tribe, right, in making sure that I've got a network of people that are fully going to support me and travel with me all the way to Las Vegas to represent South Africa. So I think preparation is key. So I'm getting my national costume now together um, and having those tribe of people as well to be there to support me. So it's... It's a journey, and like you mentioned, it's rather you start now mm. and you know align yourself and make sure that you're ready to represent South Africa. I look forward to it. Look, I, I know international pageants, and you've been there before, yes. is the most incredible experience for any young woman or woman to experience. I mean, it's the ultimate. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sure you then going to take this brand internationally, am Absolutely. I right? Because, I mean, you're going to be sporting some of Miss On Lisa on that Absolutely. international Absolutely. stage. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. No, I think there's a platform for it. Mm. You know, and like I said, this is what the platform allows you. You mm. know, you get to show so much of yourself mm. and, and your authenticity through, through the journey. So this mm. is definitely a right platform for me to upscale my brand. Mm. And I look forward to introducing it more now, obviously, as a Miss South Africa. Tell me just lastly, Felissa, how do you relax? How do you take time out? I know you spoke about centering yourself, yes. uh, but how do you just get quiet or silent uh, to be able to recharge? Like you said, yeah. fill the cup. How yes. do you fill the cup? So I fill my cup through my spirituality. Um, I center myself back into the Bible and, and I read mm. quite a lot um, mm. with books as well. However, I love kendo, which is martial arts. <laughs> I love it. It relaxes me. There's just really, something about... Yeah. You know, <laughs> hanging on that sword, <laughs> okay. pointing it out, oh, and just <laughs> yeah, no, I love, mm. I love martial mm. arts, and I also love Pilates. I love mm. Pilates, mm. and also some time out of my children, putting that phone aside, you know, scraping out all the technology, mm. and just fully being present. I feel like we mm. miss that. We miss being present. So, and also when I go out with friends for dinners, for lunches, I'm present. I make sure mm. that technology is completely off and fully be present amongst those that you know. Mm. I find myself hanging around. Look, the viewers don't know, but you've got your daughter with you here today. I and did you just tell me <laughs> the, the motivation behind having her here is? Oh, it gets me into tears because yeah. I mean, I grew up from a, a single parent. So my mom took me <laughs> everywhere, um. you know, and she's a businesswoman. And I think uh, we need to allow our girls to see where, 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 what does mom do, mm. you know, and also for them to draw inspiration. I know mm. I, I look back in my life and I think about mom and how mm. she was such a hustler, <laughs> you mm. know what I mean? And for her to attain her degree at 16, you know, and mm. she, she grew me and she put me through pageantry purely mm. because she wanted me to gain my confidence. Mm. And that's something she never had. So I want to do the same for my daughter. I wanted to mm. watch mom at work. Thriving, mm. happily so. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And and yeah, mm. I just wanted to grab that out of this journey. You know, there's a saying that goes, happy family or happy mother is happy yes, children. Absolutely. But Palissa, thank you so much for, for, for joining me today. You are sincerely and honestly a true inspiration. And I'm sure many people out there in the rest of South Africa will be watching you. I think there's a lot still to come for you. So thank you so very much. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So there you've heard it from Mrs. South Africa 2022, 20, the lovely Palesa Machikani. From me, Wayne Stafford, and the team here from PPMC Magazine, from Queen Talk with Wayne Stafford. Until next time, goodbye.